There's a prophecy in the Hadith of Islam that in the last days, the desert of Saudi Arabia would turn from being a desert to being green and full of rivers. And the shocking thing is, is that that's happening today. But I will fully explain why that's happening. It's linked to the Bible and the connection from the biblical text to the Islamic text or Hadith. So the Hadith says that the hour or the final day of judgment, as they call, that's what Islam calls the last day of judgment, the hour. The hour will not be established until the land of the Arabs returns to being green and lush and full of rivers. Here's an article on the NASA website about climate saying fields of green spring up in Saudi Arabia. This is from March 29th, 2012. I'll show some pictures on the screen from 1987 to 2012 how much farmland and areas of green have sprung up in Saudi Arabia. And more recently, here's a video six months ago that came on the internet of areas of the Saudi Arabia desert where just wells of water were struck and water's just sprouting out, creating large flows of water in the desert, really looking as if this prophecy from the Hadith of Islam is actually coming to pass. But just like everything else in the Quran and in Islam, we can find it written first in the Bible. First, something to understand is that the books of the Bible, the Old Testament, were written in Israel and the surrounding region, and then books of the New Testament were written more towards Greece and Rome and those areas, but all in that general area. Now, Muhammad was born in Mecca, and if we look at a map, it's just south, Saudi Arabia is just south of Israel and the original birthplace of the biblical texts. So Islam was sprouted from the exact region that all these biblical stories were first written in and talked about and being spread from mouth to mouth through all these different people. And that's important to understand because here we can look at some things the Bible has to say, such as in Isaiah 43 in verses 19 through 21, it says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me and jackals and the owls because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I form for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. In another verse in Isaiah, Isaiah 32, 15 says, till the spirit is poured on us from on high and the desert becomes a fertile field and the fertile field seems like a forest. So here we have these prophecies in Isaiah written in the eighth century before Christ. 1400 years before the Quran and the Hadith were written, we have stories in the same region and the book of Isaiah was a very well-known book so very close to where Muhammad was born in Mecca there in Saudi Arabia, stories of water in the wasteland and streams in the desert. We also have Psalm 107.35 that says, He turns a wilderness into pools of water and dry land into water springs. And the book of Psalms was written between 1010 and 930 BC, so almost 1600 years before the Quran was written. In the exact same region, right by Mecca where Muhammad was born and where all these stories and where the Quran was birthed and the Hadith were birthed. But as you can see in the biblical stories, these exact things were written hundreds and even over a thousand years, almost 2000 years before that prophecy was written in the Hadith. And that's a super important thing to realize when we see these prophecies in Islam and these things coming to pass and all these people who are following these things, see these things and believe that it's God doing this, and they are putting their trust in the Hadith and the Quran, what they should really do is look back and see, wow, well, it was actually written almost 2000 years before the Hadith and the Quran in the Bible. That's where our truth and our trust needs to come from, the original source of all of these prophecies. We see similar connections between the Quran and the Bible and the Hadith and Islam. In Revelation 16, 12, we hear of the vial of the angel being poured out on the Euphrates River and the water of it being dried up. And then we have in another hadith, which is just like an oral tradition that the majority of Muslims believe to be interpretations from God, says that the hour will not come, again the hour is like the last days, the last day of judgment, will not occur until the Euphrates recedes uncovering a mountain of gold over which people will fight, 99 out of every 100 will get killed. Jesus is also written within the Quran and within the stories and the beliefs of Islam. In Islam, they believe that Jesus was born from Mary, the virgin, and without a father, an earthly father. But for the Muslims, they don't believe that Jesus is God or the son of God or one with God. They believe that he's a messenger of God and that he's actually coming back in the last days. They call him Isa 
and that he's coming back in the last days to fight alongside the Mahdi, which is like a savior messiah type figure within Islam. And he's going to come and fight off the evil and the Dajjal. These are just things, I mean, you got to think what was written first. We have the truth of the, Bi of the Bible and of the gospels. The gospel stories are eyewitness accounts of people who lived with Jesus. Then we have these Quran stories written 600 years later, just south of where all those events taken place. I mean, either one of them is correct or the other one isn't. They're clearly not both correct and contradicting each other. Which one seems more correct? The multiple eyewitness accounts that we have within the biblical stories, these same stories that we see transforming people's life to this very day that we're not seeing in other areas of religion. I mean, when's the last time you've seen a video on YouTube of somebody who was in the occult, in witchcraft, an ex-drug addict, an ex-alcoholic talking about how Buddha pulled them out of their addiction? You don't see that. You see Jesus Christ is the one who saved them. This is just an important truth to realize and something that I hope the Muslim people of the world who have faith and believe in God will come to see the truth of who Jesus Christ truly is. You can also look and see the prophecies of the Bible. They have all come to pass or we can clearly see how they're setting up will come to pass in the future. In the Quran, there's multiple ones that there's no proof of it. And there's no understanding of seeing how this will ever come to pass in the future, such as the mountain of gold under the Euphrates. So if that never happens, when it dries up, hopefully Muslims will start to put their faith in the biblical account or the prophecy in Islam that the earth at one point was split in two. No proof of that, no evidence of that at all. We would see marks on the moon. There would be bigger rocks floating around, no evidence. Or the prophecy of the sun rising in the west instead of the east. This is something that when it does not happen, that I hope that the Muslims will start to look more to the biblical prophecies that we have seen either all come to pass or clearly being set up to come to pass in the future. In, in the Quran, in chapter 17, verse 111, it says, And say, praise to Allah, who has not taken a son and has had no partner in his dominion, and has no need of a protector out of weakness and glorify him with great glorification. Now, why would that be in reference in the Quran in reference about God having a son when written hundreds of years, hundreds of years before that we have in first John 2, 22 through 23, it says, who is a liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is antichrist who denies the father and the son. Whoever denies the son does not have the father either. He who acknowledges the son has the father also. Again, written hundreds of years before the Quran and the Hadith. This is the truth. Jesus Christ is the son, the savior of the world. The Bible has the original stories, the eyewitness accounts, and we see how it has life transforming power for those who are giving their lives to it. We have thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of videos and testimonies of Jesus Christ of the Bible transforming the absolutely lost lives of the world. We do not see this in Islam, we do not see this in Buddhism, we do not see this in the New Age, we see none of that. Instead, what we see actually is the highest conversion rate from other religions to a different religion is from other ones to Christianity. This is where the truth lies. And Jesus even says in Matthew 11:28, 28, an eyewitness account of Jesus Christ written and documented in the book of Matthew in Matthew 11:28 28 through 30, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus Christ holds the salvation. He holds the answers. He is the son of God. He is one with God. This is the absolute truth, and we can find it in the Bible, in the Bible which was written way before the Hadith, way before the Quran. So when we see these different prophecies happening and taking place, such as what's taking place in Saudi Arabia and in the deserts or in the Euphrates River, or in all these different areas where Quran prophecies look as if they're coming to pass, all we have to do is look back to the original source, which is the Bible, in many cases written hundreds of years. Well, in every case written hundreds of years, in some case almost 2000 years before the Quran, the absolute truth this is the source. The Bible is the original source for all of these prophecies. And that is where we can find the absolute truth. And that is my prayer for any Muslim person who watches this video. You have faith in God. You have faith and want to believe in what is true and what is right. Seek out the truth in the biblical text. 
go read it and see what it has to say. You're allowed to read it. There's no warning in the Quran or in the Hadith from Allah that say you cannot go study what the Bible has to say. Go study it, read the book of John, study the prophecies of the Old and New Testament and see that it is the original source and it will transform your life in God, the one true living God, who wrote his word through people and through the power of his spirit will speak to you when you're reading it and studying the Bible. And you will have an encounter with him and hear from him so clearly that you will know for an absolute fact that the Bible is the word of God and it is the absolute 100% truth above all other things in all of existence. Let me know what you think in the comments and other prophecies that are from other religions or different sources that are tied to the Bible. That stuff is interesting because we can see the Bible holds the original truth and others have taken and used it to build upon. And it's interesting to make these connections. So if there's any other ones from any other religions or sources, let me know in the comments below. Interesting things to study and a way to get the gospel truth out to people. Thanks for watching and God bless.